The following review contains full spoilers for Arkham Knight, especially regarding his identity. So I've got this friend who wants me to read a visual novel that I'm not really vibing with, and as a result, I've been clearing my backlog at mock speed for the last few weeks so I can say, eh, I'll get to it after I finish this next game or two, alright dude? I picked up Arkham Knight for 5 bucks at a Steam sale, and seeing as how it's been nearly a decade, two states, one diploma, and two diagnoses since I've last played an Arkham game, I decided to give it a whirl. I got in, did the tutorial bits, and faced a shitload of technical problems in the process, being my first major brick wall into getting into this game. With alarming regularity, the game would have unplayable slowdown that only fixed itself by closing it out and restarting the game. There's zero rhyme or reason for this. It once took 2 minutes for it to get bad, it once took 45. It slows down in empty rooms, in cutscenes, and in pre-rendered videos. This being my first video, it was actually incredibly useful. It allowed me to have separate small chunks to start and stop recording, allowing for easy labeling. After six separate restarts in a two hour time span, I finally got to the first real area, a chemical plant, where scarecrows hold up in manufacturing sphere gas on an industrial level. This is where the scale of the threat Batman's up against is first fully revealed. This is where you would do non-tutorial combat and predator gameplay for the first time, and it's where the Batmobile's first really flex for combat and puzzle solving. It's where the titular villain is introduced, and it was this first introduction that made me realize exactly what kind of shit show I was in for narratively. This introduction immediately annoys me with a nitpick that wouldn't be out of place on Cinema Sins, but bear with me regardless. The helicopter that he arrives in comes from underneath the bridge that everybody is on, yet nobody noticed. Then, the knight fires missiles that destroy a portion of the bridge, before Batman confidently strides ahead, staring down the chopper unafraid. The knight locks on, says a one-liner that Batman cannot hear, only for Scarecrow to remotely disable his weaponry because it's the tired old cliché where I want to play with my food gets the hero out of an inescapable death. The helicopter flies away, Batman talks to Jim Gordon, and then you fly in and start doing the Arkham Blend trademark pending of brain-dead stealth, brain-dead combat, and brain-dead puzzle solving. On a narrative level, it attempted to illustrate the following, that the knight is more than ready to kill, that he's a powerful threat, that he somehow knows Batman, and that Scarecrow has to rein him in. Underscoring the first two points, granted, but I'm also going to expand on it in a moment. Immediately, this threat against Batman is lessened by the simple fact that Batman's life was only in danger because he was a fucking idiot. Batman is, mimetically so, a meticulous planner. He might do something that seems suicidal, but it's always in service of getting some gadget hack, some switch thrown, some line set up close to dramatically shake the villain's convictions and prevent him from pulling the trigger, something to evict himself from danger in an instant. In this scene, he has no plan. There is no batarang thrown that sends a chunk of concrete down to the chopper before it's a chance to fire, forcing it to reposition. There is no sudden rescue from the Batmobile, sending him flying across the bridge's gap into the factory before the knight knows what's happening. There is nothing. Batman walks up to an assault chopper and just looks at it menacingly because he knows he can't be attacked in the villain's introduction. His mysterious connection with Batman is attempting to lead up to a dramatic and shocking moment where the knight is unmasked, the audience going, how could I have not seen the signs all along? The problem lies in the fact that anybody who's heard about them funny books with the pictures in them that ain't for kids knows about Jason Todd and Tim Drake. The second the knight rolls up, demonstrating clear familiarity with not just Batman as a rival, but how his suits are constructed, how a system of thinking works, and some vague grudge about saving people, the list of suspects is dramatically limited as to who it could be. Rocksteady had to out and out lie before release because so many called his identity, and The Knight is Jason Todd is one of those ubiquitous spoilers that barely count as spoilers in the circles I frequent. Finally, the scarecrow reining him in shows to me the overall tone of The Knight as a character. Despite being a classic character reused for an uninspired twist, the game proudly beats its chest and waves its banner, proclaiming that the Arkham Knight is an all-new villain that's deadlier than any Batman's faced before. The instigator of the game's plot, a terrorist planning to turn the entire eastern seaboard into a literal living nightmare, has to go up to the villain and go, hey man, that ain't cool. In other words, the writers pull every single cheap trick in the book to make him be the baddest, coolest villain in the game, and it falls flat horrendously. A little ways into the dungeon, and the knight appears a second time, and this appearance is almost worse. It's a personally constructed hell parade of tired villainous tropes I utterly despise. You're ambushed, five men with guns trained on you, the knight has arrived and is giving a small monologue while you're stuck behind a wall of bulletproof glass. And the whole time, he's giving you the same I want you to suffer before you die bullshit that the scarecrow gave him literally ten minutes prior. The entire time the Batmobile is in frame, the entire dungeon prior has been focused on teaching you that the Batmobile could be remotely controlled and that it's capable of in and out of combat use. 
Batman does not do a single thing in this scene with it until the knight is well and done with his monologue before you blast him with the riot gun, or whatever the fuck Rocksteady called it to justify shooting people in a Batman game with Mad Max combat. He dramatically escapes, and you do more tired Batman combat. Overwhelmingly, my initial impressions of the knight remind me of my early days playing tabletop role-playing games. The game master would dramatically plunk down a model, grin evilly, and go into an overlong monologue where the new villain plots our demise. Halfway through, one of us would interrupt. Can we stab him yet? I mean, he's kind of distracted, I'd think. The GM would then shoot us a dirty look and continue his tirade. We then completely clown on him. A brief flash of panic would flash across the GM's face before coolly reciting that he grins, congratulating you for a good scrap. He then reads from a scroll and disappears with a flash. Noticing her attempts to shoot him before he leaves, the GM would quickly add, before you can react. Arkham Asylum and City were far from exemplar, but they were extremely solid original stories that felt like they were ripped straight from a best of omnibus, some undiscovered gem of a storyline that has all the classic rogues pop up to at least give a wink and a nod to the fans. Knight feels like it was ripped straight from the pages of a comic found in a dustbin, untouched ever since the era of Liefeld and McFarlane, for good reason. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous game. Even the scenes that I revile have excellent composition, and the voice actors are still all in top shape, but it's only skin deep. 